approved the first big move towards consolidation of the oil and gas sector. UMW Oil and Gas Corp Bahad and Equity National Bahad's Icon Offshore Bahad have decided to consolidate their various oil and gas businesses under UMW ONG's umbrella. In a series of two separate share purchase agreements, UMW ONG will acquire Equinasa's indirect stake of 42.3% in offshore support vessels player Icon Offshore for a purchase consideration of 248.9 million ringgit, which will be settled in new UMW ONG shares. UMW ONG is also acquiring 95.5% in Orkim Sajan Brahad, which owns and operates the largest clean petroleum product marine transportation vessels for 472.7 million ringgit to be settled in cash. In its rationale, once the exercise is complete, UMW ONG will lead the creation of a major integrated service provider across the ONG value chain, comprising seven jack-up rigs, one semi-submersible rig, five hydraulic walkover units, 37 OSVs, 14 CPP and two liquefied petroleum gas marine transportation vessels. UMW ONG says that it will be in a position to benefit from the expected recovery of activities in the sector, which has been battered over the past year. If successful, Equinas will emerge as the second largest shareholder in UMW ONG with 12.6%, second only to Pramodalan National Berhad, which will hold 40%. UMW ONG will then undertake a mandatory general offer for all the remaining shares in ICON to be settled either via cash or new UMW ONG shares of 80 cents per piece. It does not intend to maintain the listing status of ICON Offshore. Upon completion of the consolidation, UMW ONG will also embark on a recapitalization exercise via a rights issue of 1.8 billion ringgit. Commenting on the move, UMW ONG President Rohaizat Daru said that alongside creating a major integrated offshore service provider, it answered Petronas' call for consolidation in the industry. While Equinas' CEO Syed Yasser Arafat Syed Abdul Kadir says that while the industry has gone through a rough patch, the improving outlook means that it is an opportune time to pursue consolidation. Axis Real Estate Investment Trust is expecting its total assets under management to grow by more than 10% for its current financial year. This target is backed by the completion of Phase 1 of Axis PDI Centre, plus a few more acquisitions that the trust says it is eyeing. Axis Street Manager's Bahad Chief Executive Leong Ket May says that once the first phase of Axis PDI is complete, it would increase its AUM from 2.19 billion to 2.4 billion ringgit. As for the acquisitions, Access Street Manager's Head of Investment, Siva Shankar, says that the fund is targeting to complete the acquisition of Kerry Warehouse in Pasir Gudang, Johor within the first quarter of 2017. Siva adds that Access Street is targeting four more assets in Selangor, Pahang and Johor with a combined asset value of 400 million ringgit. Am Investment Bank Bahad is recommending shareholders of Shell Refining Co. Federation of Malaya Bahad to reject the takeover offer from Malaysia Heng Yuan International Limited. Independent advisor Am opined that Heng Yuan's offer of 192 for 49% of Shell was neither fair nor reasonable, explaining that the offer price of 1 ringgit and 92 cent per share is not fair as it is lower than and represents a discount from 53.8% to 59.6% over the range of fair value per Shell share. While the not reasonable part came from Heng Yuan's decision to strengthen Shell's position as a regional refined product supplier, which would prove in the shareholders' best interest. Also deemed not reasonable was Heng Yuan's decision to maintain Shell's listing status. Malaysia's total vehicle sales for 2016 managed to exceed the Malaysian Automotive Association's target. Somewhat. Total industry volume or TIV for last year came in at 580,124 units, just 124 units above MAA's revised 580,000 target. On a year-on-year -year basis, this was a 13% drop compared to the 66,677 recorded in 2015. According to MAA President Dato Aisha Ahmad, this was the first time that TIV fell below the 600k mark after six consecutive years of sales growth. For 2017, MAA has set a sales target of 590,000 units. Aisha expects this year to be equally challenging as the ringgit continues to weaken and the global economic uncertainties continue. But, says that on the bright side, the MAA is expecting to see a mild recovery in new vehicle sales this year should Malaysia's economic activities pick up. Remember when Singapore said that it would impose a reciprocal road charge on foreign vehicles entering the city-state? Well, according to Transport Minister Dato Sri Liu Tong Lai, it may be scrapped 
if Malaysia proves that there was no intent to discriminate against Singapore registered cars. Singapore's move to impose a road charge of $16.40 was widely thought to be a tit-for-tat move to Malaysia's decision to charge 20 ringgit for foreign cars entering JB. But according to Leo, the road charge will also be implemented at all other land checkpoints in the country by the middle of this year. As such, Malaysia is planning to impose road charge at other border entry points with Thailand, Brunei and Indonesia.